I'm here to talk about my organization and how we utilize enterprise, specifically social enterprise, in youth work. So, where do I come from? There is an image here that isn't loaded, uh, and uh, I blame my technical assistants, Ramon and Hermansis. Um, I come from a town in the north of England called Scunthorpe. It's uh, a steel town founded on the, the steel industry, and it's proud of it. But it's an industry that's dying. <laughs> and as the industry dies, <laughs> so does the feeling of worth in the town. It's part of a broader picture around being working class. And England has long had, uh, been obsessed with notions of class. And to be working class in my town used to be something to be proud of. You were making something, you were building something. But now the old working class jobs are disappearing as the steel industry declines. So. The uh, steel industry used to employ 30,000 people in my town, now it employs 4,000 people. Um, and these jobs are being replaced by a different type of working class, working in a supermarket for minimum wage perhaps, a job that doesn't naturally create pride in people. It's solely the creation of wealth for somebody else. And worse, young people aren't ready for those jobs. They're let down by the education system, and they don't have a clue how to be interviewed, how to present themselves, how to manage their own budgets, let alone other people's. And so in a relatively small town, we have increasing levels of youth unemployment, more than the national average, and uh, creeping up steadily as well. So we have a need to embrace new industries and technologies, to be creative, and to create employment. So what did I do to help the situation? I began uh, with a focus around volunteering, helping young people to contribute to society um, and to gain experience at the same time. But then a strange thing happened to me in that young people began to approach me and say that the opportunities that I was offering were not relevant to, to them, to their interests and to the labor market. And they weren't prepared to gain experience in fields that they weren't interested in. And our job centre uh, in England, they don't care about young people, they care about numbers and they treat young people as numbers. And that's what my service began to feel like towards young people, that they were just numbers. So I listened to them, I consulted with them as a group and I asked them what they wanted. And they said they wanted opportunities to be created. They said they weren't happy with the shops in town, the retail offer, and they wanted their own, selling clothes they were interested in and gaining experience at the same time. They said they had ideas, but nobody was listening. And so my approach changed. I stopped trying to offer the opportunities that we had been told would benefit young people and started to, uh, supporting them to develop the opportunities that they wanted. I began to treat them as the experts. And why did I do this? So uh, we were addressing economic issues, but social issues at the same time. Enabling young people to gain a broader understanding of the issues enabled them to contribute towards finding resolutions. It gave them ownership. And so the first of these projects was something we called Old School Clothing Co. This, oh, the pictures, <laughs> come on. These are good pictures, believe me. Um, <laughs> um, okay. Old School Clothing Co. was uh, a vintage clothes and art store set up by young people, run entirely by young people. We took over an empty retail unit in the town centre. We have the same issues as mentioned in Germany. And the young people, they staffed the shop, they bought the stock, they customised the clothes, they sold the clothes. I was really a, a facilitator. And so we were there to provide opportunities for them to be creative, to express themselves and to utilize what they were interested in. And there's lots of opportunities to be creative in a clothes shop, from fashion shows, makeup, um, street art opportunities, um, just allowing them to uh, explore and express themselves. And <laughs> Small investment, big outcome. I can do the words, it's fine. Um, so how did we make it happen? With a small investment, we looked around for funding, for sponsorship from local business, and, uh, and we secured a small amount. Don't worry about it, it's fine. Um, and for that small investment, 
we managed to work with over 250 young people over two years. Many moving on to find employment or other opportunities to re-engage in education. What I liked about this project was that there were opportunities for the young people to fail, for them to take risks, to make mistakes, because I believe that that's an important way to learn new things, to get things wrong and to be supported so that there are no significant negative impact, so supporting people through failure. What else I liked about it was we had the upstairs space as well, and that we used as incubator units. So it was divided into several offices, and up there we supported the growth of an art gallery, of film production companies, street art workshops, and many other small enterprises around uh, web design, for example. And then we evaluated the project around what was working. I approached that project still as a youth worker, you know, uh, there was no clear hierarchy in the, I wasn't the boss, just a facilitator. The young people had control over the decisions. But what they said to me when we evaluated was they wanted more structure, they wanted hierarchy, they liked routine and, uh, and, and they felt that because of that it wasn't representative of the workplace. <laughs> It was still a valuable experience, but it wasn't similar to the capitalist world we live in, where we all have a boss we answer to. Um, and building young people towards taking ownership, towards controlling a business, is a participative process. It takes time. You can't just say, there you are, there's the keys, take control. So as young people began to move on, we had to start the process all over again. And, and invest significant amounts of time. We did have great success with the incubator units. And so, what we decided to do is take that project, build on it, and, and create something new that could take all the positives and, and reflect some of the changes that young people wanted to make. And so we created another beautiful picture here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> a black, black campus, indeed. Um, so <laughs> we uh, we began to we developed the idea for Cafe Independent. It's called Independent for a reason. Indie is uh, a word in England that means uh, alternative, different, you know. And also, this is what we're striving for to create independent young people. And Cafe Independent is. Uh, it's in the process of building it. I've secured the, the funding and now we are refurbishing a building that I showed you a picture of here that you can't <laughs> see. But what is it? It will be a coffee and music house. So by day, like any high street independent coffee retailer, and in the evening, an arts venue. So music concerts, art exhibitions, film screenings, all this kind of thing. Young people will work in the project. They will volunteer their time. So. Uh, they will serve the food, make the food, uh, interact with the customers. Uh, and they will also access formal training, so qualifications in customer service, in retail, in catering, all relevant to the local <coughs> labor market and opportunities that are available. And also, crucially, non-formal training, because I haven't forgotten that I am a youth worker at heart. So there is some stuff around employability, around confidence, around uh, interview techniques but uh, essentially some issue-based work as well. Um, and who do we work with? We will work with 120 young people per year. 75 of those young people will be disadvantaged or with fewer opportunities. So people with drug problems, young offenders, those in care. We want to work with the hardest people to reach, um, although I must make a point on that. Um, we heard some talk earlier about, uh, about these lost young people. And yes, perhaps they are lost in terms of their journey through life, but they're not lost in terms of where they are. We know where they are, we just have to go and find them. They're on street corners, they're in parks, they're in, places, they're in squats, uh, in bedsits. So we always go out and find them. People always ask me with old school, they said, is it hard to find young people? And I always said, no, it's not hard to find them, it's hard to get rid of them once you've got them. Um, but back to the, back to the cafe. Um, so 75 of 120 
will be disadvantaged. But we keep the projects open to all young people, to university graduates, to anybody who can, wants to come and volunteer, because we believe in the benefits of young people sharing and learning from different experiences. So graduates are struggling to find work, but maybe they can motivate and inspire people to follow a different path, to follow education, perhaps. This building we have is massive. It's uh, over 3,500 square meters of space over four levels. We're in the process of making it pretty, of refurbishing it right now, so when I get back, I hope the toilets are going to be in the right place and not on the, on the ceiling or anything like that, but uh, we will find out. And to make that happen, the young people uh, who are interested in the trades are volunteering alongside employed tradesmen. We're keen to build links between the unemployed and those employers, potential people who could take them on, take them for work. And it's not often that employers have the opportunity to meet young people in a different environment that's not the interview, where they can see firsthand that they are prepared to work and, uh, and work hard. So we are trying to break down those barriers. And that's a theme that runs right through our project. We are keen to link, and we have these links with employers to provide pro progression routes. We are only one step on the pathway, but we need to ensure that the transitions are carefully managed and that we support people through those. This program is all around unlocking motivation, you know? Um, to find what young people are passionate about, interested in, and what they can do, what their strengths are. Um, and, that's, and that's the crucial bit. And one more um, progression pathway that we built into the project, building on the success we had with incubator units, was uh, to develop, there's a beautiful logo here. Uh, <laughs> Uh, to develop growth. So on one of the levels is dedicated solely towards social enterprise incubator units. We called it grow because that's what we're trying to do. We're, we're trying to grow something here and we're trying to encourage young people to grow something, to develop something. And this place offers time, space and support to young people to turn ideas into reality. Simple. So in time, young people are given the time to develop their grants, uh, to develop their projects, to invest in themselves. Space, it, it's a fully functional office space with administration support and can host up to 30 young people. There's a large co-working area with, uh, to encourage young people to share the ideas, to cross-fertilize um, and work together but also individual units to accommodate their further growth, so they move into the uh, separate spaces. And the support in terms of uh, business planning, informal expertise, but also local business mentors, successful local entrepreneurs who've made it themselves, who are still committed to the community and want to give something back. And actually engaging them wasn't so hard, you know? They all had to start somewhere. Um, but and, and crucially as well, a financial safety net through, uh, we, will, so we provide uh, through our organization financial management to ensure that they're not getting into debt or things that will cause them complications later in life. Why business? It doesn't come naturally to me as uh, in terms of youth work, it seems to be a conflict. But sometimes when there are limited opportunities, sometimes you have to create your own. Lots of the research here fed back that there are not enough jobs out there. In the absence of a clear state strategy for in England to create jobs, I decided to support young people to create, the, create their own. The other reason why we chose business is because around ownership. The young people own their own ideas, and there's no greater tool for motivation in my eyes. Choice is a powerful tool, and knowing you're working for yourself, for your benefit, is a great motivator. They choose the direction of their enterprise, how much effort they put in is up to them, but of course that has a direct impact on the success. So it encourages responsibility and therefore social responsibility. All the skills involved in developing a, a social enterprise are transferable. Um, we're talking finance, marketing, communication, organization, and not least of all presentation. Each young person must pitch their ideas to us and then to the local business community. 
they're learning to sell themselves in, in a professional way. I, there's other entrepreneurial ways in which you can <laughs> sell yourself that I wouldn't encourage. Um, and all these skills are relevant to the workplace. So, um, so even if the young people are not successful entrepreneurs, they are better prepared for the workplace. Um, and so this is our approach. We start with where the young people are in their lives. That's why the program is not just a social enterprise incubator unit. It is not just work experience or formal training or non-formal training. It is all those things dependent on where young people are in their lives. And we try to make that fun as well. We don't try to overload them with business plans and bank managers. We start small, you know, uh, from selling cupcakes in, in the street to, to developing uh, further down the line. Process over product is always key. Not all of these businesses will be a Google or a Facebook or anything like that, and that's not important to me. I'm more interested in the process the young people work through in developing their business idea than in the, the finished product and how much income they're making um, or generating. The difficult part is ensuring young people place value in that area as well. And that's the flip side to ownership. They really care about the end result, the product, but enabling to reflect on the journey that they've been on and the process that they've gone through reinforces the learning that's taken place. And finally, it allows us to explore social issues through enterprise ideas. We talked about ownership, and uh, that's a powerful tool. But uh, I'm not Margaret Thatcher, may she burn in hell, and uh, I don't believe in <laughs> individualism. Um, we encourage young people to make their enterprise social ones, to create some social value from what they do. And that can be as simple as offering opportunities to other young people within their own enterprise. They recognize that we have helped them, and they, uh, and they value that, and they are keen to help others and to give something back. And so thank you for listening. Now please come and visit us in England, Scunthorpe. Uh, you can look me up. And thank you very much.